Hi everybody! One moment while I pull up the big screen and then, oh my gosh, we're gonna have so much fun tonight. I've been looking forward to it. Maybe for the last couple of days, but definitely for today. <laughs> so it's Thursday night. I am Lisa Harden coming to you live from the Stamping Zoo in kind of a dark and dreary Boise, Idaho. But you know what? We basically live in the desert and so we like the snow. Or, Sorry, I'm rushing it. We like the rain. Yes, we like the rain. We don't like thunder and lightning, but we like the rain. So um, it's been, it rained a little bit this morning and hopefully it will rain tonight. And okay, I can see you ladies, Jean and Roz. Hello, I will be saying hello as people jump on and join with us. But if I miss you, please don't take it personally because A, I will probably see it when I go back and look at all the comments tonight. And B, sometimes I'm looking down, and as more and more of you watch, which is a good thing, right? Your comments go by a little quicker, so I have to get used to that. <laughs> so there's Susan and Julie and Amy. Hello, everybody. It's so nice to see you. Oh, my gosh. So um, the dogs were a little upset with me because I basically have been playing with what we're going to work on tonight since I finished work. <laughs> so I finished work and I was working from home and then I fed them and gave them some loves, but I didn't like spend a bunch of time with them and they kind of feel a little slighted. And Cash, I believe, hello Cashy, is looking at me. And so what did I do right before I came on here? Um, I was making sure they had fresh water and then I gave them a guilt cookie, <laughs> right? <laughs> Have you a horrible, <laughs> Mom, my kids would be overweight. Thank goodness the dogs aren't. But anyway, oh, of course, Julie. Yeah, um, it's not the best occasion to make a card, but it's an important occasion to make a card, right? Yes, I think I saw Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. It's so nice to see you. You need to come back to the United States. I don't know if you can yet, but you need to come back to the United States and see all of your people here. And um, you never know when our paths will cross, right? But anyway, I hope you're doing well. It's so nice to see you jumping on for what is your Friday morning. Um, there's Mary from Canada, Kathy Sanford. Did we get a Kathy Strang? Did we have a Kathy Strang in the house with Kathy Searle? Hello. Nice to see you. And let's see, who did I miss? Uh, okay, well, Kathy Strang will be on here because I talked with her, just texted. And uh, I don't remember what we were texting about, but she told me she would see me. Hello, Katie Tyler Romans. <laughs> have we met before? Yes, I think we have since like the seventh grade. Katie is uh, my bestie and she doesn't necessarily like to put stamps, inks and paper together, but she supports me. So hello. And uh, her daughter is Taylor, the one who makes me all the cool thank you cards and stuff. So. Hopefully she'll be on here too. She has been, um, Katie, she's been asking me, of course, to take her to Freddy's, please. <laughs> she's not sending me a text every day yet, but hopefully um, I can get to it before she gets that desperate. So, hello, Leslie. Hi, Anne. <laughs> Anne's back on the home front and um, she had a fun family vacation. So we all know how that goes, right? It's great, but it's also nice to come home. Let's be honest. So thank you for sharing, please. Let's keep this up. The Stamping Zoo is growing, it is. Believe it when I tell you, I see new people every week on here. So uh, please keep your shares up. I think our, la our most shares was 23 um, a couple of times ago. And then remember, I was so excited that I gave, a gave away a bunch of prizes. So you keep sharing, you keep hitting those, um, making new, what I want to say, records, and I will keep sharing prizes. So that's how it works. Also, um, you can definitely hit your like and your love button. Somebody's doing right now. It helps me know when I am working, um, what things you like to see. <laughs> so, um, and definitely if you don't like something, I guess you can give me an angry face. Um, but see, and I make the angry face right then, right? Ugh. Um, it's not my preference, but at least I know you're there. So, hey, thanks for sharing. Everyone's sharing, yay! So, oh my goodness. So I worked at home today, pretty uneventful, right? Um, we did not W-A-L-K because it was kind of wet and 
Uh, my dogs are shorties, and so I didn't really feel like giving them a bath and stuff. And maybe I was being a little lazy, let's just be honest. I just wanted to get started uh, working so I could stop and craft. So anyway, but I did, however, receive a very nice <laughs> comment on one of my posts um, from a male admirer, of course. Now, you've all, I'm sure you all have those male admirers. Uh, my common demographic is five-star generals and surgeons. Um, let's see. No, that's mostly it, really. But today it was uh, someone who worked at Shell Oil, I think, or Chevron. Anyway, and Brene was so nice to tell me that... <laughs> Oh God, what'd she say? Brene, are you on here? Tell me what you called him. He was an oiler bohunk. <laughs> she said he was an oiler bohunk or something like that. Oil rig bohunk. Okay, so now I have my first oil rig bohunk, right? Um, and he, boy, did he go on. <laughs> he didn't just say, I want you to like me, like my page or whatever. He went on. Now here are some of the more poignant things he said. I do not want to be rude to encroach on your profile. I just want to be your friend because only from your profile, you seem like a nice, kind attention. <laughs> I would love us to chat and get to know each other better. Good friends here. <laughs> oh God, man. I tell you, I definitely didn't get this much action from real live men <laughs> when I was out and about dating. But I sure bring them in on the internet, don't I? So, um, you know, I'm sorry to say I'm not going to be pursuing this relationship. I blocked him. <laughs> but, you know, it's worth a laugh. Weirdo, definitely <laughs> weirdo. English is second language and weirdo. And the English and second language is not the offensive part, <laughs> right? So anyway, oh my gosh. And his name was... Richard Houston, and so um, definitely I wanted to know if this was a relative of Kevin Houston's, right? Kevin is not claiming him, but that doesn't mean they're not related. So um, anyway, he's dead to me, right? He's blocked, <laughs> but I will make sure. In fact, I should start taking, I'm gonna start taking screenshots of the profiles before I block them, because you know, I mean, they're priceless, right? Um, the last one was, looked like an, uh, European soccer player. And, um, there was somebody who had a little girl and a dog. I mean, they try it all, but I really think that if somebody wants to hack my page, they should probably portray themselves as like a 50 year old stamper. <laughs> Don't you think? Yes. And maybe one of, maybe I have one, but, um, these men get real, <laughs> No thanks. Who falls for that? I say no one falls for that, but then I see all these shows on 90 Day Fiance, so somebody is falling for this stuff, but it's not me. You will not see me there. <laughs> Hello, Pam. Oh gosh, we were just laughing about my Romeo from today. Always makes it funny. Yeah, oh, I know. No, I didn't think Jen was serious. Um, my sarcasm doesn't play off on Facebook very well all the time. So yeah, it was pretty cute. Thank you so much for sharing everybody. So I know Kathy, I love that show too. <laughs> we'll have to talk about it, our favorites and stuff. I know 90 Day Fiance and all the offshoots. I'm sorry, but I mean, I don't watch them all religiously, but I like the one called Pillow Talk where past people watch the show and then comment on it. Who would have thought that was a show? But there I am watching it. So yeah, too funny. And there's Kathy Sheely. Hi, Kathy Sheely. So nice to see everybody. <laughs> KZ says, my sister got a scammer and gave him the address of the FBI as a place to meet. I love that. I've got to think about that. I got to be quicker. I have not watched Made on Netflix yet, Megan. It keeps coming up in my um, promos. Is it good? It looks interesting. <laughs> yeah, KZ. She is, um, KZ is a go-getter, and I'm sure her sister's no different, right? So I love that. Oh, my God. <laughs> the FBI. You know, um, 
Speaking of that, somebody was asking me about how to name their, this is like an old joke, right? But um, I'm old, so I'm just catching up. Uh, when you log on to your uh, network, you see all the network names. And um, sometimes they're really lame. But there was one on there one time in my neighborhood that said, FBI surveillance van. <laughs> and I love that. I thought it was so funny. So yeah, FBI surveillance van. Oh my gosh. So you are not, um, you're not just at a gossip show <laughs> about 90 Day Fiance. You are actually here because I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. One thing that means is that I am addicted to paper crafting. Settled. Um, not disputed. I am an addict, right? And um, I hope you are too. <laughs> but whatever stage of paper crafting you are in, I welcome you, even if you're just here to watch and find out what is this all about, right? So I am, as I said, coming to you from Boise, Idaho. And also, I, as I said, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. One other thing that means is that I will be, I can sell all of the products that I'll be using. Uh, so there with rare occasion, I will use something that's not from Stampin' Up, but Stampin' Up really covers everything we need for our paper crafting, soup to nuts, right? Paper snips to adhesives, to decorative papers, quality card stocks, beautiful embellishments, and of course, the highest quality stamps and dies and everything in between, right? Like I, I can't, if I could list everything, it would take me a long, long time. So, um, if you are just interested in this, please leave me a message here, uh, send me a private message and, um, let's talk, but I would love it if you would post, um, if you haven't before, uh, post if you're new, tell me where you're, tell me where you're stamping from or where you're watching from and uh, anything else you'd like me to know about you. It'd be great. Talk, everybody talks to each other on this live and, uh, my viewers are the best viewers. I'm sorry, but they are. And um, so they will treat you very kindly if you say hello and that you're new. Okay. Kathy Stroll says she watched the Boise Boys renovating guys. Yeah. Okay. They're here. They're in a little area called the North End and that's actually where Katie Romans lives. So I don't know if, I don't know if that show is still, if they're still producing right now with COVID and also, um, like lots of places, the housing market here has gone buku crazy. So I don't even know if there's any inventory, let alone anything that, um, you know, they want to buy. So anyway, good show though. Very good show. I like those two guys. They're pretty interesting and they have a cool style. Okay. Well, I think we should get started. At least we should start talking about some Stamping Zoo news, don't you think? Um, if you placed a purchase with me, a minimum purchase of $40 with me in September. Your kits are going out to you um, in the next few days. So I am starting with last month. I am doing a promotion every month that will uh, give you three free kits, project kits for cards and other things. Uh, if you purchase a minimum order this month, it is $40. And if you purchase a minimum order with me this month, the featured bundle is the Pretty Pumpkins. We've been working with that a lot. And so your kit will have three projects in it. One will be the cutest card or mini cake box, right? This has a cupcake in there. And it will also include supplies to make this card and one more card. I don't know yet which card, but um, I have a lot to choose from. So just know that you get all of the card kits and um, envelopes or whatever it needs. You get everything except for stamped images because that is a Stampin' Up! policy. That is a no-no, I cannot do that. But what I can do is send you all of the cardstock, even the cardstock that you need for stamping. And then you can use uh, the designs as, as I've designed them and you can use the featured bundle or you can use your own stamping. You know, you can go off on a tangent and use your own stamp set that you like. So anyway, please take a look at that. Uh, I, you must use a host code to, um, to make sure that I see it and can send you those kits. The host code is listed at the top of this Facebook page as an announcement. So it's always at the top and it has a picture of that cupcake box. 
okay, with the host code, as well as uh, I put it in my emails a lot. So um, if you're not on my email list, what are you waiting for? Just go over to thestampingzoo.com. There's a purple pop-up box and you just register there. And then from then on, you get uh, lots of, I send out tutorials that I don't give here. Um, lots of times I give measurements over there with a tutor written tutorial that um, we don't have time for during the lives and stuff. I I mark it for all my classes over there. It's usually where I market things first. So please take a look at that. Uh, guess what? It doesn't cost you a dime. <laughs> so I appreciate that in advance. Tonight we are going to work with, I thought it was over here. Tonight we're going to work with the bundle plus an extra stamp set that I am featuring in my Bingo Rama on October 15th. That is coming up. That's the first event or that's the closest event that you need to sign up for. You need to sign up for that in the next few days if you would like to. I will be sending out Kit's priority mail on Monday, Monday morning. So, um, and it's best if you tell me before Sunday night because guess what? I'm not gonna cut you a new kit probably. Um, so you need to sign up by Friday and um, it's gonna be a lot of fun and you can add this bundle at the time that you register, which here it is. Let's see here. Let's turn me around just a tiny bit, if it will. Hmm. One moment. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is uh, the featured bundle we'll be using. All the whoops, all these gorgeous dies. Oh my gosh. And we're using this tonight, but this will be the set that we use in the Bingo Rama. Um, as well as, of course, we're having games. We're having bingo-like games, actual bingo games, get-to-know-you games, um, just door prize games, whatever. So if you would like to join us, again, that is the night of October 15th. You can get all of the information. Um, I, I will put it in the links on this video after I finish recording it. And of course, it's on my Facebook page. If you wanna look at it now, it's in there several times. And if you receive my emails, it's in there several times too. Uh, I don't want you to ever be looking for something and not be able to find it. So I give you a couple of opportunities. <laughs> and I can't wait to give away, um, I usually give away more than I plan because I get a little caught up in it. So who cares, it's all fun. So anyway, um, like I said, several of you are going to be there and I would love to add a lot more of you. So uh, it'll be via Zoom. So you just join, you can come in your pajamas if you want, you can bring your dog and um, you can drink margaritas. <laughs> so it's a really a nice way to have a, a, a fun girls night in, right? And lots of other events are coming. And again, just sign up for the stampingzoo.com and you will, that's the easiest place for you to see all of those events and read all about them and see all the sign up options. Okay, so if you do have questions about my events though, you can also just private message me or um, email me at the stamping zoo at outlook.com. Okay. So um, anyway, we're going to be playing with that tonight. And let's see, we are going to be using a couple of different DSPs. I love them. Um, one of them is gingerbread and peppermint, the six by six. And so um, let me fan a little bit of this out for you. It's really gorgeous. It's in what I call a super suite at the very front of the holiday catalog. We'll look at it in just a minute. This suite has a couple different stamp sets and dies, all sorts of papers, embellishments, ribbon, and we'll be using some of that tonight. And we're just mixing and matching. But just in a, sh in a nutshell, right? Isn't that gorgeous? And some of them, uh, ooh, I almost dropped them. <laughs> some of them, of course, you can use the die cuts to cut out the paper pieces. And so it's like the easiest cookies you'll ever make right? Or you can stamp them by hand and make them any different colors you want. So we will be playing with this later. It's part of an event coming in November, a stamp a stack. Uh, but tonight we're just using the paper. And let's see, we are also using paper from 
painted Christmas. I love painted Christmas. It will always, it will also have its own event um, to come. <laughs> but let's see here. Let me show you some of the papers. Now this is 12 by 12. And yeah, I should have samples cut, but you know what? I would rather just play. Sometimes I get really organized and I cut samples, don't I? And sometimes I just play. And uh, so anyway, for right now, you just get to see a beautiful snapshot. Let's see here. Okay, I will hide my face. <laughs> Look at that stuff. Is that gorgeous? And then this, yes. So really pretty, uses maybe all of our greens, I don't know, lots of them. Uses cherry cobbler and real red, and um, it's just beautiful paper. The stamps and dies are, are like standout. There are all sorts of pine cones and branches and things you can cut out, and then one of the stamp sets is just sentiments, and it's, it's kind of a must have. So, and lots of label dies and stuff. Okay, so that's just a tiny bit of what's going on. Oh my gosh, I have so much planned that um, sometimes when I look at the calendar, I think, am I going to be able to do all these things? But yes, I am. <laughs> because I am fueled, let's see here, I'm fueled by Fresca, yes, and um, I'm fueled by you guys, and I'm fueled by my love of paper crafting, so it's not gonna be a problem. We're just gonna have fun from now until the end of the year, okay? And again, all of my events, or at least the majority of my events for right now, are going to be online. So as long as you are, um, you know, have, have internet access, you can join in one way or another, right? I even have some online only access. So you can be anywhere in the world and join. Okay, everybody, I think I'm gonna point you down and we're gonna get started. Oh, I should show you. Now this is a template, so the colors are funky on purpose, okay? But this is one of the cards we're making. It's called a TP card. <gasps> Isn't this cute? Isn't this so adorable? Has anyone made this yet or before? I certainly don't think it's new, um, but see, it comes apart and then you can put this one, I size this down to put it in a regular envelope. So this, where's my envelope? Well, trust me, I'll show you a moment when we point the camera down. And then um, there's just a little Velcro. Oh, I've done some fancy Velcro. So um, anybody can put this card together. Even your non-stamping grandma is going to know how to set this card up. So anyway, this is one of the cards we're making tonight. And we're going to do some coloring and all sorts of stuff. And I'm sure something will go not as planned. And that's the fun of it, right? Okay, so I am going to flip you a little bit. Um, please don't get, don't get motion sick. Look away if you don't like that, okay? And you're going to be upside down. Hello, everybody. Gosh, I'm so acrobatic when I'm on the camera. I hardly can really um, do a somersault. Well, what am I saying? I can't do a somersault in real life, at least not right now. But um, on the camera, it makes me look really agile, doesn't it? I can't do a somersault. Yeah, shocker. I'm sure you're all really surprised about that. Okay, I do have the window open because it feels really nice here tonight. I wish you guys could, you know, have all the, all the um, senses going because it's just really nice tonight. But we'll see. If dogs start barking or whatnot, um, <laughs> I'll be shutting the window in the middle of this. <laughs> yes. Oh, Donna says she's made one of the TP cards before, and it was fun. I think it's really fun. And Sherry, yes, I saw that you signed up for bingo. I'm so excited. Yay. See, I even have to decorate this area. So I will be giving you the measurements on this because it's it's super easy. Now, I say that, and sometimes <laughs> when I'm speaking and I try to put these together, I get confused. So I've tried to help myself out. Oh, my goodness. What is Fresca? Fresca is like a grapefruit, um, it's a grapefruit soda, sparkling soda water, it says, with grapefruit citrus. That's pretty fancy. It's been around since the days of Tab, which I never drank, but it used to be like one of the two diet drinks, but yeah, it has different flavors now, and they're always trying to push that. It always seems to be available, but I just like the grapefruit. Don't get fancy on me, just give me the grapefruit soda. 
So anyway, that's what I drink sometimes at night. You guys know that. Um, yes, so TP card for obvious reasons, right? And then like I showed you, um, we are gonna put a little, I don't know, whatever those are called, hook and, hook and loop. Yeah, I bought some on Amazon. I will link it. Uh, there you are, Kathy String. I was looking for you. <laughs> so I will also, um, the other thing I'm going to link in this description of this video after we record it is um, my Amazon link for these hook and loop closures. I will tell you, I think I spent eight or nine dollars on them, but I have enough for the rest of my life and then I probably will bequeath them. <laughs> Look at these. Oh my gosh. But, you know, they're good. They seem to be really good. Uh, the sticky part is pretty sticky, so that's kind of nice. Oh my gosh. Um, I guess I wasn't looking. And also, they don't sell things for $3, so lots of times for things that aren't very expensive, of course, you know, on Amazon, they will package up a bunch of them and give them to you. So anyway, I like them. And then it's just kind of nondescript right there. Okay, so before we get started, in case you are, you know, as you watch this, you are going to fall in love with these two stamp sets and the dies. So this is the bundle. This is the one that's sold as a bundle. And when you purchase this together, if you choose to, you can save 10% when you buy it. This is um, an extra stamp set, but of course it goes together and in fact... This is shown at different, it, it looks like the closures are different sizes, but that's because these images are only shown at 80%. But the cloche is almost exactly the same, except the little images on the side to denote glass, they're slightly different, but you can interchange them. But you're going to want to have both. Oh my gosh, look at this. The pie, caramel apple, this Christmas pudding, cupcake. And so it can all go on the on the cloche. So we will use this for our second card because I just love it. It doesn't have coordinating dies, right? But you can still cut out the cloche. And, um, you know, everything else we're just going to stamp directly on. I think it's good to have, not be cutting everything out all the time. I do not want to die cut every single paper little piece. There's a company, another company, and they make teeny tiny images and it all always looks kind of fun until you realize like I'm going to be die cutting for five hours. Okay, so here's the sweet treats. It is $17 US, a steal, and it's on page 11. Okay, and then if you go over to page 22, I believe you will see the bundle. And again, if you don't have this holiday catalog and you live in the United States, you're not working with another demonstrator, please private message me. I'll get them in the mail to you tomorrow, I promise, because they are just as much of an idea book as they are our ordering books, right? And I want every paper crafter to have our catalogs because they're just phenomenal. Okay, so then here you'll see, um, I wrote on this, sorry, I have a nice clean copy that I use sometimes for you, but I forgot to grab it. So anyway, you will see these are different colors and what that means is that that means there's a die in this die set that specifically cuts out these images okay and then there are all these extra little pieces so we know we're cutting out the cloche we can cut out this little christmas village and we can cut out this birds which is really that's nice but then we we have all of these trees these pine trees we also have a couple whoops we also have a couple different slopes that we can put inside the cloche maybe for um for that little scene the christmas the christmas village we also have this stand that it can sit on or we have this fancier stand that it can sit on and so it's not just floating in the air, right? And then we have these really fun branches and they go with any set, any nature set. Um, so anyway, a nice, nice bundle for $45, cool. And um, if you were to purchase this using the host code this month, you would get three kits. Remember, don't forget about the kits. You'll get three kits from me um, featuring the 
pretty pumpkins. So anyway, just trying to mention that a few times because it is new and um, I want you to know about it <laughs> because it, it just makes it a little bit more fun, doesn't it? When you purchase something to get an extra little thank you, like I always send out thank you cards, but you get an extra little thank you. So anyway, uh, bring on Christmas. As it said, we are going to make some Christmas styled cards. Now, as you can see, this is all um, retired cardstock. And um, I was smart this time and used that instead of using up all of my current cardstock, like I did last time with the paper pumpkin. <laughs> so this is pretty easy, I believe. Oh, here we go. Okay, so I just wanted to show you um, what you do with this is that you take it apart in half, right? And then it will fold right down and go into the envelope. Now it just depends on how you decorate it, right? Whether it's gonna fit in the envelope. <laughs> but you can definitely put it into um, our acetate boxes or another gift box that we have, and that would be a really fun way to present it as well. One set you don't have, I can't believe it, KZ. <laughs> Oh, and the whimsy set is so fun though. But yeah. Oh, look at this ring. I found it in my jewelry box, right? I just, it's one of those things I just forgot about. It's, um, it's, um, what do I want to say? It's kind of a cool color. Goes with my, goes with my, uh, fingernail polish today a little bit. So I thought you would like that. All right. So I am using a little bit of the painted Christmas and let's see here. We are going to make the card from soft sea foam. And I have a little bit of, I was testing out colors, all different colors. And so we have a little bit of white cardstock for stamping. Of course, now look, I know, now I know where both of these are. I think I have three, but okay, I know where two are. So that's good. And um, I even got my paper pumpkin. I mean, my pool party blends out. And then I did a little die cutting of some of those pieces that I just showed you. Oh, we need one more. We need this other little square. So this card is a series of squares, right? It's three squares, one, two, and then one behind. And then on the front, it's a series of triangles, squares cut in half. And that's how we decorate it. It's very simple. Okay. So, um, I, for tonight, of course you can use our Simply Scored pad, but, um, it's sitting right next to me, but I just thought I would grab my paper trimmer. This is what I do most of the time. And we are going to score or cut this paper. Now this, I think you're actually going to be able to see because I'm not worried about the measurements down here or up here. I'm just worried about getting these stacked diagonally on the paper trimmer. So you can see right through here and you can move this the tiniest bit so that the points are um, in line with the trimmer and then taking the scoring blade, not the cutting blade. Give that a good score, okay? Do that with all three triangles. Again, these triangles are four inches square. The cool thing about this card is that you can make the triangles, or the squares, I'm sorry, any measurement you want. I made one that was five, and it was quite large, but of course it'll fit in a five by seven envelope. So, um, and then you have to uh, change the measurements of your, your DSP and stuff, but that's okay, you can do that. Now, because these are four, I cut these at three and three quarters. Okay, and then I'm going to cut these, not score them. They are going to be background paper. So again, I just take a last look at those points. I wanna get a nice, precise cut. Okay, so again, they are three and three quarters. Okay, and when you cut them in half, you have perfect backgrounds for your triangle pieces. Okay, and this little guy, and so again, this is from Painted Christmas, and this paper looks um, extremely alike on both sides, but I like the size, the side that has the addition of the evening evergreen boughs, but
but you could definitely turn that over and just use um, the lighter colors. Very versatile, of course. You know our, you know our papers are usually themed on one side and then more general on the other side. So it's very nice. Okay, now just like with all fun folds, we want to score or we want to burnish these scores, score marks. So that's what gives you a nice foldable card, right? Just bringing in my bone folder and scoring all of our cardstock. And there we go. Now, one of these is going to be like ones on the base and it's gonna have two wings, okay? So it's basically gonna have one, see how I'm putting that behind? Okay, one and two. And then um, it's gonna all fold in. So what I'm going to do here, let's grab a little pencil. Now, do we have any questions yet? Okay, I don't think so. You're all being very quiet and watching. <laughs> so, but you can ask questions should you want to. I like to give this just a double check here. Make sure that, yes, this looks good. Okay. Make sure your folds stay where they're supposed to. Having a nice point on your teepee is, um, just makes it look good. Then I'm going to make a little mark on this. I feel like there's something on my pencil lead. I don't need it to be super dark, but I need something there. Okay, so once I have that mark right there, then I'm gonna take my liquid glue, and I know that I don't wanna go past it, right? But I want to cover everything else. Get a little bit up, right up in the very top, and of course, down the sides, you know, get it close. Again, this is part of what will make it look really sharp put together. Now put this back on top, okay? Line up those points on the top and then come right down the score line right here. And again, that's why I use liquid glue because you can move it a tiny bit. And then finally bring it in here and give it some burnishing and then you should be good to go. Okay, we just do it the same thing on the other side. So again, kind of focusing on the top here. I want to make those points as close together as I can. It just helps it look the best. And so using that uh, little pencil mark as a guide, there is something on this pencil. It's probably like glue or something. I probably stuck it in glue. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, there we go. And then that tells us where to put the glue here and where to not put the glue. So this is, I believe this is like the inside of the card, but still you don't want it to be messy, do you? No. Okay. And then using our guide and the top of the card, of course, just kind of falls in place. Okay, that looks really good and again like you're just trying to make sure that this all comes together folds down then that helps us know that it's put together okay so take a screenshot of this if you would like just remember that these squares are back behind the diamond okay so I will leave that right there so the squares are behind the diamond Okay, now you can see it already. This is our card. That's how easy it is. This is deceptively easy, I think. So let's turn it over right here. And see, I could have gotten that a little bit closer, but it's okay. Once we get this all finished, you are gonna see that it's not a big deal. Oh, I needed to cut that piece of white. So this is how my triangles are going to fit in here, right? Are we liking this? Uh, has everyone liked this or do you, would you like to make one or have you made these? 
maybe it's a blast from the past. So I had another three and three quarters piece of white cardstock, and these are going to go on what will be the back of our design so that you can write on them. You could also line the inside of this card. Oh, shoot. You could line the inside of this card with DSP and, um, you know, write in there too if you wanted to. I just um, moved my cardstock, so I need to do another three and three quarters square and then cut it diagonally. There we go. Okay. Now these, right, will just go that way. Okay, and I'm just going to glue these down. Nice, Kathy. See, I've never made one. Um, okay, let's see. I wish I had the person's name in front of me. It was somebody in the UK. Her name was Carol, not a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and it was from several years ago that I saw this. I mean, I just happened upon the video, but she made it several years ago. I'm sorry, Carol. She had pretty, some pretty cute ones. She, her paper wasn't as cute as ours, but that's not her fault. But um, she was making several of these, and so that's how I found out that you can change the measurements all you want. And I'm just kind of um, lining this up a little bit with, again, the, the perimeter to make sure that that, and of course you don't want to go over your score line, right? It won't fold very well. And then, and again, I am working to keep my glue towards the outside. A couple of these points are, will be under pressure when you use that hook and loop. So you wanna make sure that your DSP is attached very well. Yeah. Anything like that just helps to make it look really professional, sharp. You know okay and then down here we are going to use the other thing I would think is you want to probably avoid papers that are directional so with writing that's just all up and down hello Louise and um, you know or otherwise directional I don't know because um, because of the way you're cutting this paper and then you're doing a fun fold and all that business so just avoid that. We have plenty of other non-directional beautiful papers like this painted season, right? So then finally, we're gonna glue um, again the back piece. This is where you can write or stamp extra images and stuff directly on it. You could do that before you laid them down, but I'm afraid I would stamp them upside down. <laughs> So I'm just going to put it all together right now. Did I already put that one down? I did. Okay, so then, okay, see how our card is coming together, right? Isn't that fun? It's beautiful. I love this paper, paper cardstock combination. That is so pretty. Okay, final step for the actual card is to put your little hook and loop on it, right? So I liked it to be right here on this point. So I am gonna take, this is how I do it. These are adhesive. I feel like they're strong enough, okay? So I'm gonna take one of the, you know how the pieces, one piece is soft. One piece has the loops and one piece has the hooks. I'm going to attach two of them together, pull them off, and then I am going to put them on this corner. And maybe I'll put a glue dot on that one that was sticking on my finger because I kind of held on to it. I really pressed it onto my finger. I didn't do that last time. I picked it up with my take your pick tool, but it's all good. Okay, and then really just fold it before you press it down. Make sure that it folds um, nicely the way the card's supposed to be, right? And then just press it together that's it. 
And then I'm going to give that a few minutes of drying time before I pull it apart, but it pulls apart. Okay, so that's our card already. Oh my gosh. Isn't it fun? Yeah. So, okay, there's my template. I'm sure I'm going to need that at some point in time. And now we are going to decorate and stamp and have so much fun with this cloche um, bundle. Now, this... Oh, I make it look so easy. Oh, you know me too well. You know that sometimes it goes all to heck around here. <laughs> Casey, did you change your profile picture? Is this you or is this someone else in your profile picture? I just see a little blondie smiling. <laughs> okay, so there are shaker domes that go with um, these. They are on back order, but they're supposed to be back in back in inventory next week. And actually, um, I've ordered them for the bingo. We won't be using them for the bingo, I don't think, unless something happens and I get them this weekend. But that's okay because if you've signed up for the bingo, you're going to get a package of the domes. I'll just be sending them out a little bit later. And tonight, we're just going to focus on not using, not making it a shaker card. But just know that you can make these into shaker cards. Um, and of course, the domes will work with this one as well. So one more cool thing about this, these two stamps. Oh, let's see. I was ahead of myself and I blocked, put these on blocks already. I'm going to shut my window. All right. Shut the blinds. So I don't know why nobody's down here, but whatever. <laughs> Just because it's what I do, right? Shut the blinds. And, um, then let's see. Now, now this is a photopolymer set, which is great because you can see through it and position all of this, all of this, these scenes. But you do need a little bit of cushioning back behind your um, your cardstock to get the best image with photopolymer stamps. But since I am using this silicone mat, that's all the cushioning I need. So. Um, that's why you're not seeing me grab the paper pierce, piercing mat. Otherwise, I would. Okay, it's your granddaughter. Oh, that's so nice. She's turning 30 next week. Oh, to be 30, right? Yeah, 30 was pretty okay. 35 was great. It like it just all went uphill after 35. But the body went can continually downhill, and that's everyone's story. Oh my gosh, I forgot to show you what I got. Oh my gosh, I was so excited about this. Here's my chamois, right? No, I got a new chamois. <laughs> I highly recommend it. Look at this thing. It, it's fine. It's functional, but it's not pretty. <laughs> so I got a brand new chamois in our beautiful Highland Heather. Now I'm cheating a little bit. Oh, look, I used it today. But um, treat yourself to a new chamois, people. Like, I'm going to tell this one, thank you for your service, and I'm going to throw it in the trash or cut it up and use it for, I don't know, a spare. But I bought two. I bought two new ones. I thought that I deserved it. So anyway, if your chamois looks like mine, you might want to brighten your day, literally. And buy yourself a new chamois. They're not that much. And you already have the cover. If you have one, then you already have the container, right? You just toss the other chamois. So anyway, I was very excited to get that, I have to say. And then I was sad. I had to use it, right? Oh my gosh, you're 73. Get out. That's cool. My mom's 71 and um, she can run rings around me. I tell you what, not mentally. <laughs> I just want that to be known. Not mentally, but physically. <laughs> and I'm just teasing. She's not here. She would, um, she would get, she would give me some hack for saying that, but, um, She's not watching because you know what? She's running a restaurant. That's what she's doing. <laughs> yeah, she owns and runs a restaurant with her husband. And actually, she's on vacation right now. But long story short, she is a worker from way back. So, yeah, 73 is like, go get them, girl. You're on it. Yes, punch holes in the stamp case. That is a good point. Now, what I have done is I took my, I didn't use my snips for this. I used these scissors 
And I just, there are little tabs right here on our, let's see. This is the same kind of container. There are little tabs right here. I just cut those off. If you're in a super dry area, you might not have to do this, but um, just cut these little tabs off, right? And that gives you a little bit of air in here. See that? Right there. And so um, that helps it stay dry, but not stay, I mean, it still helps it stay moist. I hate that word, but you know, I gotta say it. It helps it keep a little liquid in there without keeping too much in there and making it go like moldy and grody, right? Kathy says, I just did this last month. I'd had mine since they first came out. Exactly. I felt the same. I was like, why are you going to throw that away? And then I thought, just throw it away. My goodness. It's time. So anyway, yeah. Brushing up those chamois because I had mine. I've had, to, I had three of mine. I mean, I had three and I've used them since they came out. So it was time. All right. With that, let's have a little soft suede. Let's make our cloche in soft suede, shall we? I think it looks kind of nice that way. And leave room to stamp the top. The top's adorable and teeny tiny. Look at that. But it's photopolymer, so it's okay. You are probably going to see my hair come in because I've got to get my face over this so I can line it up. And there we go. Super cute. Okay, now let's see. What else do I? Oh, yeah, I stamped the birds in soft suede too. I guess I just use soft suede a lot. Then I use second generation on the birds for very easy stamping. Cute, look at that. And then this is this is the inside of the birds. Isn't that fun? So we'll stamp that. Oops, looks a little uneven. Okay, stamp it off and then come in here. And it's to color the top of the birds. So I kind of look at both of the tails. And if I get both of the tails in the view, then I go for it. Oh, so cute. Okay, so that was second generation. All right, so that gave us like a difference of color. And then I just wanna use my Just Jade. And you have to say it like that, cause it's fancy, Just Jade. Okay, um, Ross says she has her shimmy, <laughs> but most of the time she uses diaper wipes. Oh, I bet you've got some shimmy, Roz. <laughs> Probably just your habit. And I know what you meant, by the way. You've punched holes in your case and let it dry after each use. My goodness. Um, washed it in the washing machine. Yeah, with vinegar and soap. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Okay, and then finally, I want, so this is all like two-step stamping. This is the inside of the um, little evergreen boughs in here. And so I wanna come in with just jade and line this up and then color those with just one inking. It's so easy and fun. You just have to kind of, again, you have to figure out like this one goes at the top, this little flat part goes down at the bottom. And again, might see my head, sorry. I kind of need to bring it towards me a little bit. And if it's off a little bit, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter that much. So line up several of those and then just kind of go for it. Oh, I'm off, that's okay. I kind of like that look. Okay, that's what I tell myself, right? No, I like it. So that's super cute. And then I'm just gonna bring it in. Now at this point, this is when like, this might be the, the um, base of your shaker card, but we're not doing shaker card, right? So I am just gonna bring in a little bit of my light pool party and I'm going to shade some areas to make it look like reflection. I want to leave some white, but that's going to be my reflection. And then I just came back in with the dark pool party because I thought these little dots were so cute and I colored them. This would be a good little area for Wink of Stella or um, also clear. Oh, just a minute and I'll show you. Just a minute. 
Let me get out my treasures. Maybe. There it is. It, shimmery crystal effects. There we go. It'd be good use, those little dots, for the crystal shimmer, crystal shimmery crystal effects. But um, this has to be, you have to leave this aside for a couple of hours to dry, at least a couple of hours. So we're not using that tonight. Ain't nobody got time for that. But someday I'll have time for shimmery crystal effects. So um, these guys are adorable. I can tell you right now. And so they are just going to be cut out with this, right? And then we also need something for them to sit on. So I've cut out the stand in Just Jade Oil and Soft, um, soft Suede. I've also cut out some of the trees you can see and the branches. So let me die cut this off to the side and then we'll bring it back and we will start to form our scene. And scene, right? This is such a cute bundle. You guys, when you start working with it, it's just your, your creative juices start flowing because you can put anything in these little cloche. By that I mean you can take images from lots of other stamp sets and put them in this cloche. It's kind of like, um, let's see, we had a snow globe and same kind of thing. So this is one very versatile stamp set. And um, if you're going to buy it, then I really suggest you just come to the bingo because that would be super fun. <laughs> Can you tell I'm excited for bingo? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I can't wait. Okay, super cute. Come here now. That is really fun. And so this is gonna be on one of the sides. Now I'm thinking, I had a note on here. This was a note from, from the maker. She said to decorate this area, decorate the right hand side because of the way that you fold it flat into the envelopes. But um, I don't know. I see you guys talking about chamois smelling or being too, um, you know, getting grody or whatever. I'm sure it has to do with our, with our climates, right? Because like the West is so dry, stuff doesn't really, it needs to dry out. That's, I mean, it doesn't, it has a problem with drying out. Whereas in Florida, you probably have the opposite problem. So then this is how the stand goes right on this. We will build this just right on this um, silicone. And then also, so I'm going to take this apart now that that's dried a little bit. Okay. So we're decorating this side. And you can decorate all the sides, but we're not going to do that tonight because, again, we have other things to do, right? We love it, but um, then we're going to do another design. <laughs> so this is probably how this is going to sit. And then we're going to have either Just Jade or Soft Suede. Oh, I kind of like that immediately. You guys can definitely give me give me your preferences, right? And then um, I want to have some branches maybe, but I also want the trees because they're super cute. And the trees can go on any side. I cut the trees in Soft Suede and Just Jade. And aren't they great standing together? I think they look really cool. These are pretty adorable. Your standard kind of pine trees. Love them. I'm going to put those two together. I just think they they deserve each other. Yeah, I would assume I would assume that you have a very dry climate, Leslie. Which puzzles me a little bit about your chamois. Okay. There's that one. Let's do another one that's just opposite. And we will use these <laughs> raws. <laughs> this is a family program. 
<laughs> That's funny. If it is, I'm in trouble, right? Okay. So let's see. Let's put this on the other side since I glued it on the other side, right? Oh, you guys, your chopped kits went in the mail yesterday, I believe, maybe the day before. They're super fun. I can't wait for you to see them. I think that we're going to see some phenomenally pretty cards. But I will say this, please make sure that you take the bag and empty it out upside down because the, um, the embellishments are tiny and I couldn't tape them um, to, normally I will tape them to a post-it, but I couldn't do that this time um, because these embellishments aren't those kind of embellishments. That's all I'm going to say. But, um, so please make sure you turn the bag upside down, okay, and um, shake it out. And there's three of a certain kind of embellishment in there, okay? Now, you don't have to use all three, but since we're talking about it, let's just review the rules or the contest guidelines, if you will. Um, we want you to use a little bit of all of the supplies, right? That's the game. You don't have to. Um, you can choose not to, but if you do, I'm sorry to say, you're not going to win. So don't do that to yourself. <laughs> if you don't like a certain item, you have to work at transforming it into something else. That's the game. Okay. If you just leave it out, that's okay, but you're not going to win. I just want you to know. Yeah. So yay, Chopped. Oh, good, Roz. Um, so just please remember that's the game. If you have any questions about the rules, first of all, read the insert. That is in every kit. Uh, it tells you all the supplies we used and, of course, the rules. Second, if you still have questions, please contact your Stampin' Up! demonstrator in your country, okay? Um, and we can help you out. But anyway, I just, I noticed a little bit of that going on. Um, and yeah, I know some of these things are challenging. That's why we put them in the kit. Because <laughs> that's the game. <laughs> And, and most of you are so good at switching things around and making them, making them like unbelievable. But um, I don't check every single entry because we are in four countries, but I check the Americans. And as some of you know, I give it back to you to give you, you know, just a heads up, like you're going to want to add all of the products because I want you to present the best thing you can. And um, also take the very best picture you can. Sometimes the, you're gonna get the best lighting unless you have like a separate setup for staging these things. You will get the best lighting by just taking your card outside. Okay, so just on a nice day, um, don't cause a lot of shadowing in your photographs and then just take a nice close up picture of your card. And again, I can coach you on that if you have questions um, about, you know, about how to show your, show your project off the best. I want everyone presenting their very best. So now I'm coloring these with Wink of Stella. I don't know why, just because um, it's always a good day for Wink of Stella. Yeah. <laughs> and since we were talking about the chamois stinking or not stinking, I guess it brought it to mind. Ross says she always reads my list of supplies. Yes, we put the list of supplies in there too. So that if you love a certain little piece of DSP or an embellishment, you know how to order it. Okay, so um, please, we put that in there. I make it every month. I make it to be helpful. So I appreciate your feedback on that. Like I said, questions? Read that and then let us know. Not a problem. Okay. I don't know. I want to put this down. I think what I'll do is I'll put it down with some dimensionals, but I will not put my dimensionals toward the edge, right? I'm not going to do it like last week when I did like a bazillion. Okay, well, I am going to do five, but I'm going to keep them towards the center of the project. Yeah, so that, um, 
it was very hard to work that color combo, Kathy Sanford. Um, and also the stars were difficult. <laughs> and um, some of you even told me, hey, what's the deal with these stars? I was like, well, when you win, you can choose the color combo. But we put stuff in there to stump you sometimes. Now, I am already seeing that I think this one is going to have to move over. Again, keep your fold in mind, right? There's Sonia. Sonia, you're always so nice to share. Even when you come in on replay, you share. Hello. I'm glad to see you live. Hope you're doing well. Miss Sonia's up north in Canada somewhere, but she always shares my videos. Um, so, it's so kind of you. I appreciate that. Now, again, these can kind of go, you know, this way and that because um, because of this fold. And then they're going to kind of stick out. Let's see how they would look. Oh. So maybe, uh-oh. Well, that was dorky. I folded that straight. I got to take this off. Um, hello, Debbie Cox. Retired and loving it. Yes. I hope you got your prize from Prize Patrol last week. Um, this needs to come off, my friends, because the I I um, leveled it with the with the bottom of the triangle, but that's not how this sits on here. So let's try it again, Lisa. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here so I don't have to guess, right? So that's all right. So as you can see, this is really like. Um, the horizontal point, not the triangle. I was following the triangle, goofy. Okay, that's super sweet. And then we can go from there, maybe putting some of these branches in and whatnot. Okay, that's better. Okay, you can also use tons of die cuts from all the other sets, the Painted season set and my goodness, tons of, I mean, I, we were using flowers from the pretty pillow box last week. So there's all sorts of little, whoa, that's a lot of glue. There's all sorts of little doodads you can use to decorate around your cloche scene. Look at that. My goodness. I like keeping those a little loose anyway. They're kind of fun. So I'm just gluing down the base. And then stick that one in there a little bit more. Yeah, okay. And remember, I didn't put dimensionals around the edge so I could kind of play with this. I think I want some Wink of Stella on these little dots too. This is also something I could fuss with forever. And it's just really fun. That's why I told you I think the dogs are mad at me because they were like, uh, hello, this is supposed to be when you visit with us. But don't worry, I'll visit with them tonight. It's totally fine. They're great. Okay, ooh, this is looking so cute. I love it. Now, while I'm thinking about it, this is the outside of the back, right? So I'm going to stamp on this. Now, this I can stamp on straight because that's... Well, it's kind of how it sits, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just stamp up the side of this. Warmth, joy, and happiness. Let's see. Oh, yes, good. I do have that hook and loop enclosure on the other side. It's not, it's not a lot of bulk, but do keep that in mind. I'm going to put it down this way anyway. And hmm, I think I'll use just jade. It's just the color I'm using right now, right? Yay. Okay, super fun. Warped joy, happiness. Oh, I love that. Man, that's cute, isn't it? Look at it. Just look at it. It's so adorable. And we'll put a set of our 
trees back here. This isn't, I'm actually not going to ride on this card, as you can tell. Um, you can leave space if you want. You just put wink on your trees. Good job. Yeah, that Whimsy and Wonder set is so cute. It's actually going to be my, um, it's going to be my Charmed Kit featured bundle for next month. Crossing my fingers that inventory is um, is available, right? Now see, just watch when you're gluing these things, right? Because like I didn't glue the tops of these trees because they kind of came off. But look at the back of this. This is so cute. I love it. Okay, now let's keep working on the front here. I feel like we need some more trees right here for some scale. Something interesting, right? So we're going to do that. Thank you, Kathy. I am having fun with this. See, I made the, I made the fun fold, but I didn't make the scene. So I'm kind of seeing this for the first time as well. And, um, I do know that I love this cloche bundle though. It's super fun. Aw. I like that. And then I think we will use a little of some sort of ribbon at the top. Why not? Let's see. Oh, I have this ribbon that's kind of fun. Let's hope it's not too big. It's just a gingham ribbon. Now, <clears throat> let me tie a bow. See what, see what we think. I want to have it at the top of a cloche, like right on the little handle. So, you know, get your bow skills out. Right, make it little. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with this. So mine's not gonna fit in an envelope. I'm not sad about that. It'll be too, uh, it won't fit in a regular envelope. It'll be too plush, <laughs> but I don't care. I give so many of my cards out by, um, you know, in person too. So I always have an opportunity to give these things away. In fact, I just was so lucky that I was feeling really well last night, good, healthy, whatever. And um, I went to my book club, yay. And so I took, um, took some cards and just let them choose some cards. It was fun, it was fun for me. Um, we just passed them around, you know. Now, let's see. It's kind of, it's a little nicer on the other side, but it's flatter on this, on this front. So this is where I shall put it. Oh my gosh. Look at this card. Isn't that fun? Now it's, this is an awkward way to show you a 3D project, but this is how it goes, right? Um, so there's like the front. Okay. This is how it stands. And then, um, of course, like I showed you before, this is the other side. We, we can still decorate that with the trees, um, but I am getting ready to move on to our other project. And then this is finally where you can sign your name, right? And then this just comes apart and folds into your envelope just like this. <gasps> I love it. Does anyone like this? I think it's so fun. Hey, thanks, Kathy Sanford. We will catch you later. Yeah, go to bed. Eat some dinner and go to bed. Okay, so this is a super fun card. And we're probably going to make it in bingo. I'm just deciding that right now. Because it's pretty easy to go together. And um, everyone loves a fun fold. That's why they're called fun fold. <laughs> yes. That's why they're called fun fold. Okay, let's make one last one. We're gonna do some coloring. And we are going to use, again, that beautiful frosted gingerbread paper. And we're going to use some Real Red Ruched Ribbon. I believe that's in the same suite. But these are wonderful gems. They are just their returning favorites. And um, they're not in any suite. They're just kind of on their own. And so, Here's what I'm thinking. This is going to get, um, this is real red cardstock. Okay, this is gonna get glued right onto the real red. And of course, I'm always sad to see what I'm gluing into the background, but you've gotta make a decision. And 
there's always more paper. You can always buy more paper, usually. Okay, that already is beautiful. If you put a sentiment on that, gorgeous, right? So pretty. Okay, then I want to cut, I want to die cut. Um, I want to use my scalloped shapes. I think that the scalloped part fits very nicely with the frosted gingerbread and all that business. And I'm going to cut um, a front in basic white. And I'm also going to cut an insert in basic white. Okay, so just two of those, the same die cut. You can use any one of the die cuts. This is the set of dies that I'm using and I absolutely love them. Um, and I, you do too if you have them, right? Um, I just really, you can find a use for them every day. Very nice bundle of products. So there's one, and we need one more for the inside. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Now, I'm going to put those away. Well, put them aside get them out of our way for right now. And we're going to do a little stamping. We're going to do a little stamping on both of them. I might need a little bit of scrap white though to test out a couple of things. This is where we're going to bring in the sweet and treats. Oh, so pretty. And I am just drawn. This is not something I eat. This is very English, right? But I'm drawn to this Christmas pudding. It's beautiful. So let's stamp our stand and we already have the cloche we need this and um we'll probably have well i'm sure we'll have other stuff on the inside but we don't need to worry about that right now okay hello michelle oh my gosh you were shopping with the boys well that sounds fun glad you could do that but we are happy to see you here as well Okay, I need a few of these blocks. I was going block crazy, wasn't I? So, um, I will show that last card um, when we finish when we finish here, and I turn the camera back up. But that is such a fun, fun fold. A teepee fold card. Okay, I think I want to use... Oh, gosh. I think I want to use... Let's try this in basic gray and see how it looks. I'm thinking about it basic gray because this thing is, you know, I'm thinking about just coloring a little bit of gray on this, but I don't want it to be too dark. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Let's see it in dark. Let's see it in soft suede though. Sorry. I gotta take, because of this DSP, I'm starting to think. I don't want it to stand out too much. Mm. Yeah, I think the warmer one, don't you? I think this one is good. Unless I get a bunch of opposition by the time I put this on a block, I'm going with the soft suede again. Soft suede is the outline of the night. Okay, and this is that beautiful <laughs> little Christmas pudding. So cute. They are great dies. Yes, you're talking about the contour, scalloped contour dies. They're good ones for lots of different sets. They, they work with lots of uh, different styles and stuff. Oh my gosh, 32 presents from the Whimsy DSP. That, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, good job. Okay, so this just fits across. Um, so it is going to go over the stitching, but that's okay. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it down to the bottom, I think. Yeah, let's bring it down to the bottom so it's not floating. And there we go. 
It looks a slightly wonky, I'm wondering. No, it's straight, it just appears slightly wonky to me. Let me see. No, I think it's straight. We'll keep going with it and see what happens, right? Now, do I want this in brown too? I think I do because I'm going to do some coloring of this in um, soft suede, so I may as well take a look. Oh, that's so cute. Okay. So we're going to put our, this is like the easiest dessert you'll ever make, right? And again, I need to bring my head in here so that I can hopefully put my pudding right on the serving tray. Oh, adorable. And then finally, let's bring our cloche in. I want to make sure this is not the same. I'm sure this is the same size. It might be a little wider. It might be, you guys. I might be crazy, but it might be a little wider. Thank you, Jean. <laughs> I, I mean, when I'm looking at the scallops, it's landing on the same spot. So we're going to go with it. Okay, so this, right, with our photopolymer stamps, it's always good to lay the stamps flat. And then take the block to the stamps, not the other way around, because um, you can pull them out of alignment and then they'll look really wonky. That's very dark. I really inked that up, didn't I? Okay. Let me clean that again. Oh, you should see my brand new chamois. So sad. <laughs> so sad actually so the chamois come a little moistened again there's that word ick but um I'm, I'm just spraying them with our spritzer because it needs a little more water right now okay I hope that's water not alcohol we'll soon know if I am out okay let's try this and let's see if we think it looks any different. I hope I can get that right on the line. Again, that's why it's so nice to have this in photopolymer. That's pretty good, I'd say. It's pretty cute. And um, finally, I am going to bring this topper in from the other set, though, because it's just kind of adorable. It's a cute place to put... Um, a ribbon and since I just missed attaching it we're gonna put a ribbon but we we already had the roost red ribbon that I wanted to use so there's our ribbon placement right there okay and we will probably put the sentiment on the inside I like that okay we're gonna do a little coloring but first of all well no we'll we'll save the we'll save that stamping for later let's do our coloring I want to do some coloring. Okay, so um, soft suede. Let's use that for the pudding, i.e. cake. Cake this side of the Atlantic Ocean and pudding the other side, right? Oh, did somebody say good job? Thank you. I was a little worried. <laughs> I hadn't stamped all those pieces yet, and so I was like, I hope this is working. Love the Christmas pud. Yes. They call it pud on a Great British Baking Show sometimes. So I know what you're talking about now. Okay, so I am going to color the cake part. And then it has icing, of course. But we're leaving the icing white. We might do a little shading on it. And then I'm trying to go around these little pieces of citron, right? This is like all those red and green pieces that you see in this kind of a cake. You could make them any color you want though. My mom actually makes a fruit cake. I know this isn't really the same thing or it's close, but my mom makes an like American fruit cake, I guess. And I'll tell you what, it is delicious. She doesn't um, make it all the time, but it, cause it's like a month long process. But I 
you know what? I'm all about like fruit and nut kind of thing. And she doesn't use a lot of citron. I don't even know if she uses any of the candied fruits, but she uses, um, just all top notch ingredients and really good brandy and stuff. And, um, she usually, if she makes it, she'll give me just like a little eight inch loaf, but man, or whatever those little ones are. Um, and it's so delicious. I tell you what, I like it. So, uh, a fruit cake out of the store? No, I, mm -mm. I've never tried that. So I can't tell you, but it's not like that though. It doesn't even look like that. I think she used to make it for some of her customers, but I think people that like cake, fruit cake are kind of dying off. It's kind of a, it's a dying, you know, love, right? I want to take a little bit of this soft, well, let's see, of this soft suede, the light soft suede. Just bring it in from here. Okay. And here too. Maybe bring a little color lifter in. Sometimes this gets me in trouble, but I just want to blend it out. So I'm moving the marker in the same direction that I want the ink to go, right? So just coloring from the outside in trying to get it to move a little bit. There we go. It's moving. Just a little shadowing, right? Okay. And then we get to color it, of course, all the little, I'm just going to use red and green because like, why not? I think I'm going to use real red. That's a given. And, um, I always like to have a little scrap to test this out, like dark, oh yeah. And um, let's use dark pearl red, and I kind of want to use granny apple green. Because you've seen this stuff, it can be, it can be kind of electric looking. Your, okay, so Kathleen's saying, your brother who doesn't like to cook makes a fruit cake. Wow. That's kind of cool, right? So is that's his like thing, right? That's what he gives. I love it. That's his gift. And do you like it, Kathleen? You know he won't be watching this. So you can tell us, honestly. Do you like it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I come along here as I'm coloring so I don't color, so I don't get stuck in a corner and... Um, like have to color three in a row red or something like that. No, uh, I do. I need that one to be red or green. So either way, it's going to. Ooh, this is pretty. You know what? I haven't really gotten out the old red and green combo yet this year. And um, it's starting to make me think about, you know what? <laughs> Fruitcake and Christmas. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, so since we're here, right, we're going to use the cranberries. I think I want to color those light. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, yeah. Jean doesn't like citron either. It's kind of, eh. it's probably an acquired taste, and I never ate that as a child. So, I don't know. It's too chemically. I would much rather just have dried fruit, and that's what like, that's what my mom uses. Um, yeah, I'd much rather have just some dried fruit. I'm using the light, real red up here. And then let's bring the dark granny apple green. Just to give it a little bit of difference in color. And where's my light? Okay. Not a fruit cake person. That's nice. Oh, that's fun. You know what? That is those kind of things, right? That make the holidays your own. So whether it's your handmade cards with all the presents cut out or your brother's fruitcake, it's something that every family kind of partakes in and looks forward to. Ooh, I love it. Okay, I'm wondering, do I want to bring, 
a slight, slight color of gray onto that icing. Oh, is this light? Yeah, it is. I want to. Don't hate me, but you have to sometimes color your white a little bit or it doesn't play off as white. So just a tiny bit, okay? Maybe a little bit up here. And I mean a little. And then I'll go over this line too. Mm, I like this. And again, I do think I'm going to bring that pool party in, the light pool party. It just adds a little bit of a feeling of glass over this. Otherwise, especially since I've colored on white, the whole thing's white. So I want to have a little bit of delineation. Don't be scared to play. You know, stamp out a couple images when you're first starting with a stamp set and just play. Just get used to it. That's what I did when I was playing with all these bird images. Just kind of see what strikes your fancy. See what you like. I love these caramel apples in here. Oh my gosh. And for Halloween, I think those are a killer idea. Uh, let's see. Now, what was I looking for? Oh, I was looking for the pool party. Where did that go on walkabout? Here it is. Okay, there we go. Okay, paintbrush end. Perfecto. I love it. It's so cute. Now wait until you see it on this. Oh my gosh, isn't that the perfect piece of DSP for this, right? Wait until you see all this frosted gingerbread stuff. If you haven't already, you will lose your crafting mind. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's 8.30. Sorry guys, I'm keeping you um, just a few minutes over. I usually try to target eight, an 8.30 finish, right? But, um, you know, this is art. I can't be rushed. <laughs> oh gosh, this ribbon is so cute. Look at it. So it's just ruffled on the ends, so it still has nice body, and you can, you know, tie it, and it looks like something, not just a big ruffle, but it's very pretty, and it just kind of reminds me of the whole suite of the cookies and the all the um, detailed icing and all that stuff, so they did a really nice job pairing all of these products. Again, just slicing off on the bias a little bit here. I've got some paper on this. It's getting in my way. Come on now. Oh, so again, that's the ruffled, what is it called? Mini ruffled ribbon in real red. Holiday catalog. First couple of pages. All right. Ooh, that's cute. Now we could have run the ribbon behind it and everything, but again, I, I just that's a perfect place for this ribbon to be, right? Is on the handle of this cloche. So up on dimensional she goes. Why? Because we can. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. Now see, it's kind of fun to watch it come together, right? So you can see how the pool party, how it is with pool party and how it is without pool party. Yep, that's right. The more you play with cards, Card making, the better you get, definitely. So just practice. Wear your blends out, right? Dry them out by using them, not by letting them sit. Because <laughs> they will dry out on you, and then you'll be sad. You'll be like, oh my gosh, I should have used those more. Now I have to buy new ones. All right. We need, of course, uh, I'm going to use two glue dots. Oh, goodness. We're going to have a commercial break for the doggies. Hey, do you want a nighttime snack? You've been so patient. He's a good boy. There you go. Go tell Tango. Jeez, I'm a horrible mother. I didn't visit with him after work, and now I made him wait until 8.30 for his snack. can't believe Tango isn't in here. 
Maybe he's outside. He'll be in here. Too sweet once he sees that. This is gorgeous. It's going to be even more gorgeous because we're going to put some wonderful gems on it. And you could use these for, I guess you could use those um, for the citron, but I don't want to cover that up. It's so pretty. Candied fruit, whatever you want to call it. I am, again, I'm going to put the sentiment um, on the inside. Not every card needs a sentiment. Uh, in fact, it's nice to have some with no sentiments, isn't it? But this is undoubtedly a Christmas card. So, um, but there's so many cute ones. Let, let me bring this stamp set back in. We're going to do a tiny bit of stamping on the inside. So bring on Christmas, happy birthday, a tasty treat for someone sweet. Any way you slice it, I'm thankful for you. That would be great for, you know, obviously, thank you cards during the holidays. And then happy birthday for people like me. Um, we like to have winter birthday cards. And um, so anyway, I love that Stampin' Up! always pays attention to that because we still have the same holidays going on, <laughs> right? Ooh, Kathleen said a final thing, which was very nice. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to share this video. We love it. And let's see. So I really like Bring on Christmas. That just sounds cute. And so let's put this in here. And I'm also going to use, we have a wide border in here. And so I want to use this heart sugar cookie um, to create a little bit of interest on the margins. Okay, so that's going to go there. And I need to put that little topper away. And then I will go ahead and put this on here. Bring on Christmas. Where's Tango? You can't come back for another snack. Do you think you're not going to recognize you? <laughs> He's like, oh, hi. Um, just me again. That little boy. Come here, Tango. Tango didn't get his cookie. Tango gets a cookie. Cashy, no. Hey. Sorry, you guys. Cash, I tell you what, he is a cookie monster. He is such a cookie monster. His dinner, eh, not so much. Let's try this. <gasps> Isn't that cute? Okay. Just had to make sure, and guess what? It was cute. No surprise. Okay, a little bring on Christmas. Love it. And then inside, like I said, around the margins, I just want to put this um, little heart cookie because it's adorable. And why wouldn't you want to stamp more, not less? It's about stamping more and sending more, not less. Ooh, cute. Let's see how that looks. I think you can see them. Can't really see the whole thing. Okay, I'm gonna bring some more. I'm gonna do some more in here. Here we go. Okay, and then down here. All right, that looks better. Hello, Jenny. Nice to see you. Thank you for sharing. I love it. She's like, I did share. I can't share more than once. <laughs> oh, I like this. This is really just bright and happy. I love this a lot. I know. Treats for the babies. Hello, Susan. Thank you. Susan says, nice. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Oh, okay. So here we go. Just wrapping up. Our second card, there's nothing like a pop of white on real red, don't you think? Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So, so pretty. Okay. So, let me clear the decks just a tiny bit and bring you back up so that we can chat for just a minute and you can see that 3D card a little bit better, right? Uh, where is it? Where did I put it? Here we go. Okay, these were fun. I had fun with these cards tonight. I hope you did too. 
Here you come, upside down, right? She's upside down. It's really fitting. If you knew me, well, you know me, so you shouldn't be surprised. There we go. All right. Of course, this thing needs to come up a little bit. Are you going to be looking right at my nose? Nobody wants to do that. There we go. Okay. Oh, that was a workout. All right. Oh my gosh, I need to change these and get my Halloween stuff up there, don't I? Sorry about that. Um, time just flies right? Okay, so listen, we have had a really fun night playing with classic cloche and the coordinating sweets and treats and also the dyes. Please don't forget about my bingo rama, which is featuring the classic cloche. We will be playing lots of games. We will be winning lots of prizes and we will be making lots of cards. It's a Friday night, so um, it is Friday night the 15th. You need to sign up by this Friday night. So by the end of tomorrow, please sign up if you are going to join us. And of course, I would love to have you there. And we're not making this particular card, but we will be making cards um, that look like this, <laughs> right? So there's our lovely Christmas pud, as Leslie told us. And then this is our first card, which was the TP card. So just to look around this. And um, then don't forget, this folds flat into one of our standard size envelopes. So clever, I swear. Um, I wish I would have made it up myself. But it's okay, because I can case, right? Okay, so I hope you guys had fun with this. Thank you so much for the hearts. I see them coming by. And um, now I am going to go chat with my children, right? And I am going to um, have some dinner and read your comments. I know I'm having dinner. It's going to be a light dinner, right? Maybe some toast. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. I love seeing you every time. And so um, hopefully I can pop on this weekend. But um, I'll see you soon, okay? Thanks so much. Talk to you later.